20 million. That's the figure often given as the total number of people who lost their lives in World War I. When we count injuries, the total casualties rise to over 40 million. France, Germany, the United Kingdom and the Ottoman Empire saw the highest total death tolls, with each country recording over 1 million each. Whilst the country with the highest number of deaths per capita was Serbia, who lost around 22% of their entire population. At the time, World War I was known as the Great War and the War to End All Wars. The second phrase attributed to the belief that no conflict could follow such a devastating event of human history. But as we know, the war to end all wars ended nothing. There's lots to be said about World War I being such a pivotal event in history and therefore there is so much content to cover. This video will solely be focused on the final day of the conflict and more specifically the last soldiers to fall on the front lines. Important battles, events, biographies, discoveries and locations throughout the conflict all have the potential to be the subject of future videos. And so without further ado, with the last days of the focus in this video, here are the last tragic stories of one of humanity's most horrific and deadliest conflicts. In the early hours of the 11th of November 1918, important personnel representing Germany, Britain and France met in the forest of Compiègne to ratify Germany's secession of hostilities and bring an end to the fighting on the battlefield. While the armistice was not an official surrender, it would mean that fighting was to cease across the Western Front, coming into effect a few hours later at 11am the same morning. The idea of this was to give time for the news to reach combatants in all areas across the far spread battle lines. Some commanding officers allowed their troops to simply wait out the deadline in their trenches upon hearing the news, whereas others believed that Germany would use the armistice as a stalling tactic for future fresh offensives and that the ceasefire wasn't permanent. After all, an armistice isn't a peace treaty. General John J. Pershing of the American Expeditionary Force was one such example. Having not accepted the armistice, he gave no official order to his commanders to halt their fighting. However, unbeknownst to the Allies, Germany was verging on collapse, suffering consistent problems both internally and on the battlefield. And as we know, with the hindsight of history, it would be the case that the armistice was to remain permanent. To organise these final hours and deaths by nation, let's begin with Britain. The last known soldier to be killed was Private George Edwin Ellison of the 5th Royal Irish Lancers. Ellison's regiment were ordered to advance through the town of Mons over a canal and secure high ground in Saint-Denis, a few miles away. Whilst on patrol in a wooded area, a single shot struck Ellison, killing him instantly. 9.30am was the time at which his death was noted, one hour and 30 minutes before the 11 o'clock armistice came into effect. In the St. Symphorian Military Cemetery, Ellison's grave sits opposite that of John Pars, who was the first British soldier to die back in August 1914. And strangely, by eerie coincidence, the two men were laid to rest in their positions before it was known Ellison was the last fatality. In total, on that final day, no fewer than 860 troops from across the British Empire would fall in battle, many of whom went to their graves knowing that their freedom was just hours away. Next we'll look at France and Belgium, the two countries where the majority of the fighting on the Western Front took place. One of the last Frenchmen said to have died was Augustine Trebuchon, a private first class of the 163rd Infantry Division. Trebuchon was struck in a hail of German machine gun fire around 10.45am. And I say one of the last, as on Belgian soil, a Breton soldier named August Joseph Renault was killed at 10.58am. Tragically, just two minutes from the end. As for Belgium, Corporal Marcel Toussaint Terreff was named as the last fatality, who along with two other soldiers were hit by machine gun fire at 10.42am. The two men alongside the corporal were seriously injured but luckily wouldn't succumb to their wounds. Terreff, however, who had suffered a punctured lung from one of the bullets, died three minutes later at 10.45am, around the exact same time as Trebuchon. 
Canada too, which was still a dominion of the British Empire during the Great War, also had a soldier fall in the last two minutes. The poor soul, named as George Lawrence Price of the 28th Northwest Battalion. On the morning of the 11th, Price's battalion had made rapid success in the advance from a village south of Mons all the way to the Canal du Centre. By the time they arrived at the canal facing ville sur word of the ceasefire in a few hours' time had already reached them. Their plan was to continue into the village, secure the position and drive out any remaining German soldiers who had been on the retreat. In the closing minutes of the war, an enemy patrol spotted the battalion and opened fire on them, forcing Price and some of the men to take cover inside the houses. The patrol, realising they'd now exposed their position, began to pull back and were briefly pursued by the Canadian battalion. After some time in refuge, Price stepped out into the street and was shot by a sniper at 10.57am. Although he was immediately dragged back inside and received medical attention, he sadly died one minute later. And now we come to the very last known soldier to die in World War I, Private Henry Gunther of the 313th Infantry Regiment of the United States Army. Gunther had arrived on the Western Front in September 1918 and fought in the Moose Argonne Offensive, a front still heavily embroiled in fighting right up until the 11am armistice. Gunther's squad came up against a German machine gun post at a roadblock in a village near Moose, and against the orders of Sergeant Ernst Powell, Gunther charged the position with his bayonet one minute before the ceasefire. The German soldiers, knowing of the incoming deadline, waved Gunther away and fired a warning shot in an attempt to dissuade him from his advance. However, Gunther continued and began firing his own rifle at the Germans. Fearing that the frenzied private would soon come into shooting range of them, the German soldiers fired a short burst of their machine gun which killed Gunther on the spot. His time of death? 10.59am, just seconds away from the end. Like the other nations, Gunther wasn't the only one of his American countrymen to die that day. Due to General Pershing not accepting the armistice and placing no orders to his commanders to halt further offensives meant that at least 320 Americans died on November the 11th. Henry Gunther's case is particularly intriguing, as unlike the other deaths which were tragically unfortunate, the private seemed to deliberately place himself in harm's way, in what looks like, from an onlooker's perspective, a suicidal charge at the enemy. The exact reasons for his actions are unknown, but some ideas allude to the fact that Gunther had been demoted in the months leading up to the armistice from his position as a sergeant. The reasons for the demotion were due to his criticisms of the war conditions and for advising a friend to do anything possible to avoid being drafted. This bad mouthing of the American war effort had been penned in a letter home and was intercepted by an army postal censor. Gunther reportedly took the demotion very badly and may have looked for a last ditch opportunity to redeem himself by bravely storming an enemy position alone. If this was his motive then it did work as Gunther was posthumously reinstated as sergeant and also awarded the Distinguished Service Cross and a divisional citation for gallantry in action. The last part of this video will switch sides to Germany, the only one of the central powers still in the war until the end. What is known is that again many German troops would perish in the final hours, but what isn't known for sure is exactly who was the last soldier killed in action. The only possible name given was that of a Lieutenant Thomas who was killed shortly after 11 o'clock as he'd approached an American position to alert them that the ceasefire had begun. The Lieutenant's killers reportedly weren't aware that the armistice had already taken effect when they'd fired upon the officer. If true, this would technically put Lieutenant Thomas's death in peacetime rather than the war itself and place the unfortunate distinction on another German soldier instead. As to who this soldier might be is still a mystery to this day. The last day of World War I might well have been the end, but it may have also been the most tragic in some senses. You see, unlike the other days, the men who perished on the 11th of November knew that the end was in touching distance and that if they were to survive for just a few more hours, their nightmare would be over. It's also important to note that some of the soldiers wounded in the final stage of the war would later succumb to their injuries over the following hours, days, weeks and months. In total, there were over 11,000 casualties on the final day of World War I, of which 2,700 were deaths and thousands more later fatal or long-term injuries. For many poor souls, the physical or mental damage left behind meant the nightmare never ended. This was a pretty hard one to do today, and I'm not going to do the usual thing of saying that I hope you enjoyed this video, but I will sign off by saying that the young men of World War I gave their lives for the liberties and freedoms we have today. 
Even though there's no longer a living memory linked to this time, their sacrifice must never be forgotten, nor the gratitude that we owe them. And so, as a way of showing respect, I'm going to leave the video running for an additional two minutes of silence in keeping with a special tradition we have in Britain. Thank you to everyone who has stayed till the end, and I'll see you next time.